right, fantastic. Welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. We've got the honor of uh, inviting, having Kyle Floyd back. He is the CEO of Vox Royalty here for a follow-on interview. For you guys that missed the first one, you missed out. Uh, it was fall of last year, October 6th. I will provide the link to that interview uh, in the description below. But uh, going on uh, two years in public markets, and it has been an absolute ride. It is an absolute pleasure to welcome Kyle back here. Uh, Kyle, the floor is yours. Give uh, the investors who are not familiar with Fox Royalty uh, what you guys bring to the table here with what you got going on. Absolutely. And Ryan, thanks for having us back on the program. It's always a privilege Absolutely. and excited to really talk about what Vox is doing. The market that we find ourselves in today with really unprecedented inflation, certainly in our generation, um, most investors don't really know what to do in this type of environment or at least looking for what to do in this environment. Inflation's real. The repercussions for inflation are real and its effect on investment portfolios is, go is going to be profound. And I think investors that are learning about Vox and the industry that we're in being third party royalty acquisitions um, are going to do better. They're they're in the right place at the right time. We were a business built for a time such as this. And so for those that aren't familiar with Vox Royalty Corp, what we are is we are an acquirer of third party royalties, meaning we approach groups that are not operating mines, but they own revenue interests, royalties in mining operations all around the world. And we buy those typically pre-production or right before they go into production and then allow those to crystallize in terms of value and growth within the portfolio. And we've been able to create immense value for shareholders with that business model. And so it's mining engineers and geologists at the front lines of our business combing through assets and developments on assets all around the world underpinned by a proprietary database of 8,500 royalties, and then combining that, that skill set and that capability of understanding the quality of the assets, understanding who owns the royalty, and being able to connect those dots and bring these opportunities into the portfolio. And Ryan, what I think is really important for the viewers to understand is these interests are top line, which means they're not afflicted by the same inflationary pressures that we face as consumers, which is what mining companies are facing all their input costs are going up, whether that's diesel, infrastructure costs, people costs, transportation costs, you name it. All of that is being affected by inflation, just as it is for us as consumers and more acutely in some respects. So as a royalty company, when we own the top line interest in these projects all over the world, we're not affected by those rising costs and, and the earnings power of our business is not deteriorated because of that. But importantly, we do get the benefit of the increase in commodity price that's leveraged, that's compounded with how a royalty works. We can dive into that a little bit deeper. But for those who weren't uh, who weren't aware of Vox or didn't see the last uh, the last interview that we did together, Ryan, we've been the fastest growing company in this industry for the last three years. We have one of the biggest advantages in, in the form of a proprietary database of over 8,500 third-party royalties now, and one of the most technically focused management teams in the industry with mining engineers and geologists at the front lines of our business doing the hard work so you don't have to as an investor. Um, so that's Vox in a nutshell. Absolutely. And that hard work that you speak of first year out, you guys have been in public markets just shy of two years. First year, uh, two secured asset producing uh, royalties. Uh, you guys were able to get up to five uh, years ending last year in 2021, which to put that into context, it just blows away the competition. So you guys have made a huge splash since coming public markets. I want to talk a little bit about your short term roadmap into 2023, looking to continue to build upon that asset producing. That's kind of the top of the iceberg for you guys. You mentioned the proprietary database, but that top line, the top of the iceberg, those net asset producing, you guys are looking to double that to 10. Kyle, how are you guys going to go about doing that? Well, the great news is that we're not putting the capital forward or the effort forward to allow these, these mining operations to, to realize production. That's being done by the mining operating partners. And so, you know, we've got the benefit of having some very large operating partners moving these assets forward that will eventually come into production, a few this year, a few next year, um, that will ultimately see us be what we believe is a producing asset count well north of 20. But certainly we expect another five to come in over the next couple of years. We started when we went public May of last year, we had one producing asset. We've actually sold off but was a producing asset. So we've been able to grow significantly in that capacity, but it really for you know the generalist investor out there, which is what most of us are, we're doing the hard work of screening for developments on assets and understanding assets at a fundamental technical level as mining engineers and geologists and metallurgists doing the hard work to understand which of these projects we believe have that potential to be very good producing assets. And then we're looking for the best royalties over those assets. 
So it's really that growth that's been essentially validated our business model, being able to find these really great royalties at very, very good valuations, and then have those crystallize and grow in value within the portfolio. And we call that the organic growth. So that's Vox not having to make another purchase of a royalty or investment in a royalty. Our investors and our shareholders get the benefit of that growth that happens on because of the mining company's dollars spent and efforts, so not ours directly. And, and so that is part of the, the reason why royalty companies are such fantastic vehicles is because we get the compounding benefit. We get the increase in resources, increases in reserves, increase in production, all multiplied by a higher metal price when commodities are going the right direction, but not afflicted by the rising costs that mining companies are facing. And we're not diluted. Those interests are top line and they're not diluted. So it's, it's a very, very, um, powerful structure of the royalty is uh, what it's put in a portfolio amongst other royalties and in a company in a vehicle like Vox. Yeah, it's powerful and unknown, I might I might add. And you guys have outperformed uh, really all commodities class, you know, the junior mining space. You guys have outperformed the, the S&P when you're looking at, you know, the royalty companies and how they've performed over time. So I appreciate that. That's really the top of the the, the, uh, the pyramid for you guys. You know, it's gonna be interesting to see how you guys are uh, transitioning those developing into producing assets here going forward into 2023. Um, talk a little bit about your success and your transaction rate here with your uh, over 50, you've got uh, 17 acquired and seven completed uh, with over 50 transactions completed. Nobody else in the industry compares. We talked about this a little bit, Kyle, last time, but I, I really think it's important to differentiate Vox Royalty and what you guys do from the competition and how you guys stack up in your transaction and how you, you can win these transactions with, with such high level frequency. Well, I've heard you know, many people that have been very good investors for decades. They're looking for people, process, product. That's one of the, uh, you know, I would say the the kind of core tenets of successful investing that I've heard multiple people yeah. repeat. And yeah. when you look at our business, it's a team of people that are experts in this industry. We're in a small cap company. And I think that's the opportunity. We're you know, around 110, $120 million market cap company. But what, we're, what we've been able to create and accomplish is a team that has the capability to utilize what is and, and really build around a process and competitive advantage in the form of our proprietary database that has allowed us to build a systematic and repeatable capability to find value and deliver value for shareholders. It doesn't matter what business you're in. That's what you want your management team and your company to be able to do is have people and a process in terms of creating value. And so we've really been unmatched in the royalty industry over the last five years in terms of return on capital deployed and what that capital deployed has created in terms of market value. And our product, essentially our product is offering a vehicle that's significantly exposed to commodity prices without the you know individual single asset risk, without the dilution risk, without the cost risk. So it's a, for those that find out about royalties, and are more generalist in nature, so not mining engineers, not geologists. This is a, this is a really good home for capital if you want that exposure to commodities. And I think over the next, it's my belief, over the next two years, um, really the sophisticated investors are going to be putting a lot of money behind royalty companies because of the advantage position that they're in and that value that they're able to create when they're when they're doing it the right way for their shareholders. Yeah, absolutely. And just about the uh, time frame that I interviewed Kyle last fall, I was able to speak with the uh, chief investment officer, uh, Spencer Cole, who is fantastic, just to give you some further insight uh, on the team that's working on your behalf. If, to your point, Kyle, you're not a, a geologist, just you're not a mineral expert. And like I had admitted last time, the junior mining space is all over the place. You know, I, very few will succeed. Uh, and, and those that do, they succeed with, you know, they, they come out of it flush. It's a very risky business, very capital intensive businesses. And this is the way to play the commodity markets, which have really awoke out of kind of a, a, an eight year bear market here. Let's be real. Commodities have been on fire as of late um, it, from gold, silver to uranium and the like. It, it's been on fire. Some of the geopolitical unrest is actually added to that. And then the high interest rate environment that you, you touched on there. Um, 
you want to announce the NASDAQ listing? I think that's worth uh, mentioning. For you guys that are new to the uh, Vox Royalty story, uh, listed currently on the quality board markets here in the U.S., ticker symbol VOXCF, and uh, on Canadian, the venture markets, uh, ticker symbol VOX. We're going to share all that in the description below for you guys. But I want to hear it from you, Kyle. That's big news for you guys and well-deserved. It's tremendous news, and it's something that we're really excited about. Uh, our board and our management team did an extensive and pretty exhaustive review process of secondary exchange opportunities. So we're listed in, in Canada and we have the OTCQX listing in the US, but an exchange listing is really a game changer for us. We trade at a relative valuation metric of about half, maybe even less than half of what some of our closest comps trade that are our market cap size That's range. Right. They don't have the competitive advantages we have. They don't have the decades of experience in the royalty industry. They haven't been able to really validate their ability to find value for shareholders the way Vox has. So we look at this valuation gap and say that it shouldn't exist between us and who else. I agree. What do they have that um, you know is superior to us at this stage? Most of them have a secondary listing in the US, usually the New York Stock Exchange. The NASDAQ is actually the most liquid exchange on the planet. And so when we did our exhaustive review process, we came out into the NASDAQ um, and we, we meet some of their heightened listing requirements. So it, that was the place for us to go. We think it's going to have a tremendous impact in terms of increasing liquidity. Um, we believe that will be positively correlated with share price as well and covering some of this valuation gap that should not exist between us and our peers. So for investors new to the story, we are one of the fastest growing companies in the entire sector, if not the fastest. You are. We're finding better value on better assets systematically and repeatedly, yet trading at a discount to many of our peers. Uh, and so we're working hard to, to close that gap, uh, that relative valuation gap. We don't need that to close to continue creating shareholder value, the ability to find the, the types of royalties that we are um, around the world on a global basis, systematically and repeatedly is unmatched. So we'll continue building value. But I think the NASDAQ in terms of adding that liquidity and, and the positive correlation that that has with stock price is going to be really um, tremendous for our shareholders. Yeah, just really quick. We touched on it last time. There's uh, internal uh, ownership that's worth noting at about 15 percent. I, I think that that has remained uh, six million in cash on the books with no debt. I mean, you, you guys are just squeaky clean. You guys are very conservative operators, but very aggressive in pursuing your guys' business plan, which is it's just been proven to work, Kyle. Uh, I, I, I give you all the credit. That's for sure. It's impressive to watch how you guys work. Jump into it a little bit here. We talk about uh, the recent acquisition of the Limpopo uh, royalty in South Africa, 36 million uh, ounces there with half measured and indicated. The other 18 million uh, is uh, inferred. Can you talk a little bit about what that means in emboldening the uh, Vox royalty portfolio? Yeah, I could go on for hours about this royalty acquisition. This is really yeah. what we built the business to accomplish for our shareholders. We were able to find a royalty that was created in the early 1990s, had been kind of washed over and forgotten about. This asset actually came into production in 2007. I'll take a slight step back. For the investors that aren't familiar with what we do, we scan for these third party royalties over interest rate projects all over the world. And so this one hit our radar screen. And the interesting thing about this project is in 2007, it had gone into production and the metals that make up this ore body are platinum, palladium, gold, Copper, nickel, rhodium. Hard to find a basket of metals that has performed mm -hmm. as well as that basket of metals has over the last two years. Yes, so we found out about this asset. It went out of production because the metals, that basket of metals that comprises this asset basically fell from where it was at the time in 2005, 2006 to about one eighth, one ninth of where those metals trade today. So it went on care and maintenance. The really big thing about that was as a past producer, Sometimes you look at these assets and go, well, there's a metallurgical problem because trying to process out that, that basket of metals could be a challenge. The reality is it already processed, they produce really very significant amount of metal in the couple of years that, that asset was in production. And so we get the benefit of that being de-risked from that perspective. Now it's one of the more globally significant platinum groups metals projects on the, in the entire world with, when you factor in nickel and copper byproducts, about 50 million gold equivalent ounces, at least in the last, decade. I can't remember a royalty acquisition this significant for you know what we paid is a, is a very good and a very fair price. So we believe this could be a generational royalty. This is something that we that Sabani Stillwater, it's a $10 billion operator, multi-jurisdictional. They're listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, and so a very significant operator that knows how to operate these assets. 
And so when you look at this, we think this is a generational asset. This should be able to produce for decades to come um, and is really one of the flagship assets within the Vox Royalty Corp portfolio. But that is you know, essentially what we've been built to accomplish is go find these fantastic opportunities that offer great exposure. And when this asset comes into production, we'll, we'll be a, a truly world-class royalty and a hallmark royalty for any royalty company in existence. How does it cross compare to the industry? I mean, it, it, you guys have a, a real niche in winning these royalties. I put it into context when you compare it to those royalty companies out there with much larger market caps and you guys sneak in there for forgive my you know my lack of better terms but how are you guys able to do that i would imagine these royalties are very very competitive right so yeah well, i i look at this royalty when it's what and sabani Stillwater is guided to this coming back online it's in their development process over the next two to five years and you would have to expect and based on you know our our ability to do work around the edges um with the metal prices that comprise this asset this matrix of metals being so so significantly up multiples on multiples um when this we it's our expectation that it comes back online in the, in the near future when it does i think this asset is essentially worth what our market cap is right now just as that single asset um so it's a very material asset it it is it will be when it's back online it already is in our opinion, a world-class royalty. And when it's back online, it, it's a royalty that the largest players in the industry would love to have in their portfolio. So um, yeah, very exciting transaction for us, uh, a game changer in a lot of respects, but that is just what we're doing kind of every single day is scanning for these opportunities around the world. That one's a tough one to repeat, but systematically, repeatedly, sure. we're finding great value and, uh, and we'll continue to do so. And we'll continue to do that for years and years and years. And when it's all said and done, uh, Vox has the capability to be a much larger company, a much more valuable company than it is today. And so for investors looking for that growth opportunity, but growth at disciplined prices and at reasonable value uh, in the commodity sector, I think you struggle to find another company as well positioned as Vox. I do. No, I agree. I, I think the Limpopo was a home run for you guys. Uh, let's talk about the singles and doubles a little bit. Let's talk about some significant operator developments that you've got on the horizon through some of the catalysts. Uh, that I'm going to share with my uh, investor community through your investor slide deck. If you'd like to highlight some of those anticipated catalysts, improvements in the portfolio that doesn't necessarily mean for short term cash flow for the portfolio, but definitely a step in the right direction, Kyle. Yeah. And uh, investors out there can kind of look at Vox, uh, at least our U.S. investors as playing. You know, I, I would call it the best analogy in the sports world, Moneyball. We're yeah. looking for opportunities to find really good value that in a portfolio can win a World Series, if you want to call it that. Um, so as opposed to just trying to pay top dollar for everything you possibly can and not, not being able to find value, which is a lot of companies in our sector, um, our ability to go find value and see things that others can't really sets us apart. And so when you look at some of the catalysts in our portfolio, that producing asset count growth is really significant. So Otto Bohr is a Western Australian gold producer Operator guidance is that that's in production this year. Boulong is another Western Australia gold opportunity or gold project that's expected to be in production this year. There's a Faro Vanadium project, uh, again, based on operator guidance, expected to be in production this year. And then you have another three to four that we expect to hit in 2023. And for investors, it's important to understand that's the crystallization at its most tangible form in terms of value. Uh, and so when we have that sort of growth and we haven't paid premiums to bring in what's already cash flowing, we're finding assets, royalties at really good value pre that cash flowing event. And that's based on our mining engineers and our geologists being able to look at these assets, understand them, and then spec out what they're going to look like over the coming six months, year, 18 months, and find assets that we believe will be in production and will be tremendously productive for our shareholders. And so we've continued to be able to do that and execute on that. One of the reasons why you buy royalty companies is you buy it for the the unpaid for and unseen and, and call it the optionality of upside. So one of the things I'm really excited about and one of the developments is the largest developing primary silver project in all of Australia, we have a royalty over all of it. And it, it really exemplifies why you buy royalties. When we bought it, it was a very interesting project. We believe that there was a lot of exploration potential 
that exploration potential is being realized day by day. It's got over 25,000 meters annually being drilled on it. But what happened was they started hitting mineralization at depth. And so what was going to be a, just a very large open pit has now become uh, really they're scoping for an underground mine as well that would contribute high grade ore in the early days of this mine plan and really boost the economics. As a royalty company, that's an absolutely huge win. That, that extends what should already be a decades plus long mine life um, into the generational type of count. That's what we're looking for. And that's upside that we didn't have to pay for when we bought the royalty, but that exists within our portfolio. So that's the Bound and Silver project. So it's things like that. I could go on and on and on. There's a slide in our current investor presentation that outlines just some of the catalysts and milestones that these operating partners are going to be realizing. And it's important as an investor to understand for each one of those companies, every single one of those boxes would be a full page of bullets and development. And that's hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars being spent on these assets. We're not contributing any money to that effort. We're not diluted. We're not contributing manpower to that effort. We get all the benefit without having to put in the costs or take on any of the risks and we're not diluted. Um, and then we get the compounding benefit when metal prices are running of more resources coming into the mine plan, which in turn turn into reserves, increases in production, all compounded by a higher metal price uh, and, and essentially lower risk when the metal prices are higher as well. So it's a very, very powerful business model to get your arms around. Um, and for a company like Vox, you know, I, I can't imagine a, a more productive environment with the tailwinds that are behind us. So to that end, uh, does Vox Royalty, uh, is there a, a distinct correlation between the commodities prices uh, improving drastically over the last six months? Specifically, everything's accelerated. Is, is there, a, um, is there a, a kind of a, a correlation between the commodities prices now and the benefit to you guys? There should be. Frankly, there should, should be. be. Um, okay. But, yeah. you know, our share price has been over the last three, four, five three months. months. Three months. Yep. Yeah. Relatively flat. Uh, yeah. Certainly, we were the best performing royalty company in 2021. But, you know, yeah. there's a little bit of a, a flat stretch here in the stock price. But yeah. I would tell you that that should be reflected. And the compounding value of higher metal prices in our portfolio is very, very significant. And it does a couple things. It de-risks what you have in your portfolio already. It increases the odds uh, and the probability that assets that maybe would not have been in production now come into production. So again, we've been exceeding expectations every single quarter, almost every single year. Uh, and then when you have that, when you have that heightened metal price environment, that really starts to just be uh, the momentum that we generate from that because our operating partners are well financed, well capitalized. Projects that were marginal become highly productive at higher metal prices. So the compounding nature of a rising metal price should be very, very reflected in a royalty company like Vox. It has not. Um, it's hard to put a finger on why that is. I think that's coming. And that's part of you know what we're doing generally is trying to increase the awareness around our business and the value that it presents for investors because that metal price improvement that we've seen definitely has a dramatic impact on our valuation at the end of the day. Absolutely. And for what Kyle's referring to here, since we've shot the video back in fall of last year, the stock is actually up uh, on a six month basis uh, and it's run up as high as 371. The last three months on just a short term chart, I think everybody can agree 2022 has been a roller coaster in and of itself. So I, I think uh, unrelated in the equities market probably has a, a lot to do with the sentiment uh, shifting here in 2022 to much more of a defensive posture and a lot less to do with what you guys are doing internally at Vox Royalty. Um, Kyle talked about uh, the portfolio makeup. I'm going to uh, share the link to uh, voxroyalty.com. You're going to find all of the information there at that website. Absolutely fabulous. Newest investor slide deck and um, all the information used uh, in this interview I want to share with you as well as Kyle's last interview and also uh, Spencer Cole's last interview that I did profiling this absolutely fantastic company. Uh, we'll take it out, Kyle, give you the last word here. Anything that we've missed in the interview that you'd like to share with the investor audience here, man, the floor is yours. Look, we've covered a lot of ground, Ryan, and appreciate uh, the, the interest from your investor audience. We're extremely well positioned and I think it's, it's critical for investors to really understand what a royalty company offers. It's it's a very little known, I think, hack in the investment industry right now in terms of yeah. those investors that are looking for getting commodity exposure that haven't been in the space historically for the last 20 years. 
Um, you don't have to be the mining engineer. You don't have to be, have to be the geologist. You're getting leverage exposure to commodity prices and the growth in commodity prices uh, with a lot less risk, but just as much, if not more upside than you would in say owning a basket of mining companies. So I think it's just really important to understand this model has been proven for 25, 30 years now, and it's outperformed as you touched on at the, at the start of the segment, Brian. The royalty companies have outperformed every commodity based benchmark you can compare them to. And now we're in this type of environment where commodities have outperformed in the last nine inflationary regimes. Mm-hmm. Box is extremely well positioned. We're in the right bit, we're in the right sector, which is commodities. We're in the right general subsector of that, which is royalties. And we're doing it in such a way that it's creating outsized value. Um, and I think it's relatively unprecedented in our space. So excited for what we have in front of us that NASDAQ listing is going to be very, very significant for our business, our valuation, our shareholders, uh, and just tremendously excited to continue executing our business plan and growing value for shareholders. I think uh, you guys have proven that over the last two years. I think the better question is where you guys are going to be into the future. Uh, Kyle Floyd, CEO of Vox Royalty, thank you so much for your time, sir. My pleasure. Thanks, Ryan. You bet. 